Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes. For this flight I'm going from Istanbul in Turkey to Batman in Turkey, basically crossing Turkey. And uh, I chose Batman because, well, because of the name, to be honest. Not because it's a particularly interesting city, at least not in x 11. I'm sure there's a lot of background about it, but uh, yeah, uh, it seemed like a convenient location. Uh, to land in at that point about an hour away from here using this plane which is the Airbus A330-300 and um, exterior uh, modeling is very good interior is what you saw it as I've gone with the Air Asia livery even though they don't fly through Istanbul at all um, I have a few liveries for this one is Iran Air which does fly out of Istanbul but I thought that might be controversial, so we'll go with AirAsia for now. Besides, uh, Iran Air doesn't land at Batman anyway, so it doesn't matter. It's not like it's going to be a real flight of any kind. So anyway, with that, we are going to be continuing with the Apollo 12 audio. And uh, let's do that now. Alrighty. Here we go. That's pretty darn good yourself. Out of 2000. Clipper Houston, we got good color now, looking good. Okay, there we go. A little bit confused whether I had the brake supplied or not. Once again, uh, this does not have Flight Sim's little brake indicator in the bottom corner, which was really helpful. That was a really helpful feature. <laughs> No, you look awful good yourself. There you see Intrepid as it approaches. Oh, they, yeah, they have the TV camera. They're approaching to dock, and that was a heck of a comment from Dick Gordon, I guess. Okay. Intrepid Houston, uh, give us high bit rate, please. I like the 330 200 better because it has a longer wing. But as you can see, this certainly has no problem with lift. Okay. So we are turning towards the Bosphorus. Uh, somebody in the comments reminded me what it's called. The waterway that runs through Istanbul. Still a very elegant airliner. This. Coasting in now, uh, Dick Gordon aboard uh, the Yankee Clipper will actually perform the docking. Exterior light off. It's off. Let's yeah. see if I can uh, adjust the, the camera off to a more dynamic position. Say again. Yeah, I got 800. Okay. Pete Frank going around the room, uh, pulsing his uh, flight control team as to status. Uh, we're looking good at this time. Oh, one thing's for sure, they were not going to abort docking. <laughs> That would be a very controversial decision by the flight controllers. <laughs> I mean, I guess they could abort and then try a little bit later, if, but I don't think there's any data that they could possibly have that would justify that. Turn it on, 
for you. There we go, the high view of Istanbul. We got the low view last time. Lots of container ships coming in. And we're currently headed towards Ankara. Basically would fly right over it on the way to Batman. I don't know how Batman is supposed to be pronounced, I'm just gonna call it Batman. Okay, the radar broke watch, Al. Would you uh, take care of it? I'll go to the checklist. Okay. How do you raise me, Dick? I raise a nice pair of feet. You're looking awful good. I'm gonna miss Intrepid's antenna. So much better than Yankee Clippers seems to be right now. Just the whole time. Yeah, huge city, of course, Istanbul. Uh, I wonder what this highway is. O four. I was totally expecting something one because I mean it seems important, but O four it is. Winding its way down. I, I don't know if I'm missing a bridge right there, or whether that's a tunnel. Oh, we're going really high. Oops. This, uh, this thing just keeps having lift. That's a nice, uh, nice livery, to be honest. I'm liking this red. Reminds me of some Air Canada ones, too. Well, I hope that's supposed to be a tunnel instead of a bridge. Oh, it still wants to climb. Got hit by the lightning, I think. Towards the boon. <laughs> Ah, uh, docking. <laughs> this is great. This is the best stalking ever. Uh, this is the city of Izmit. I-Z-M-I-T. Towards the moon! <laughs> Okay, 
Intrepid Houston, uh, if you get a chance, we would like that picture. A picture of that burned spot, apparently, that they think the lightning might have struck. Actually, I take it back. Uh, that little part is part of the Izmit Metropolis, if you think. I mean, uh, technically, Corfez. Corfez. And then Izmit is actually the part at the end of this like uh, this inlet. Uh, this this whole thing is Izmit. And then uh, I'm not too sure about the pronunciation of the one on the opposite shore. Well, last time I flew over Turkey, it was nighttime, so it's nice seeing everything. This is not photo scenery, this is just the stock scenery. And the stock scenery, honestly, is really good a lot of the time. In this case, certainly okay. Yeah, I definitely like the exterior model on this. There's a little bit of a shading thing on the nose, but... And, you know, texture detail, but overall. Hey, Charlie Brown was a different vehicle. That was Apollo 10. That was quite an animated docking. <laughs> I had the TV clips of this. Keep saying that. I probably should have kept this for like a trip to Jakarta or something. Bit of bad planning on my part. That would have made a whole lot more sense. I will be going to like Kuala Lumpur, Singapore and all. I've got a Airbus A380 Singapore Airlines for Singapore. So... Uh, 
made it to the left way, deep down, 35,389 inch to the CSM way. That's good enough. Stand by, Pete. Right now I've got the Singapore leg with the A380 going from Singapore to Ho Chi Minh City. I might reconsider going from Singapore to Jakarta. I want to double check Jakarta is or is... that's a pretty long flight. But I think that's below... Uh, in the southern hemisphere, but let me check. I guess I better visit it before they move it, huh? Okay. Jakarta is sinking, of course. In traffic, Houston, I got your yes, rate. it is uh, six degrees south. All right, uh, It'll make the next leg quite long, but uh, I'm doing that in a MiG-15, so... And CSM weight is three, five, six, Could be done. Zero. Except for the last few flights, I've got the planes all lined up already. Still a little bit of question marks. Basically just three question marks left on the plan on which plane I'll select. Not that I'm necessarily picking the best planes for each bit. Like in this case, maybe I should reconsider this one. Batman is actually not a small place. Very, very good, Dick. Hey, he's off. Oop. Suddenly things are off. I didn't expect to lose audio. Control Houston. Uh, television transmission is down now. We uh, copied... Uh, Preliminary docking time of uh, 145 hours uh, 36 minutes. And you heard uh, Pete Conrad uh, commend uh, command module pilot uh, Dick Gordon for what he described as a super job. We're at uh, 145 hours uh, 42 minutes, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. Intrepid Houston, uh, go update a link to data. Your S -band, yeah, the city of Batman is uh, only about 300-ish thousand. Maybe 400,000 now. But the runway is a good 10,000 feet. that flies into is Turkish Airlines. I'm sure I, uh, some plane or another yeah, of mine has a Turkish Airlines livery. I Roger, give us a poo and we'll start it up. Just missed which one that might, might have been. It's all yours. Intrepid Houston, high bit right? Intrepid Houston, uh, give us high bit right, over. 
Uh, Roger, we'll give you high pin range. We, we gave it to you, Houston, but you're just not catching it. Roger, we copy now. Oh, good, high bit rate. I like high bit rate. Hey, Houston, Intrepid, uh, what time is it back there, anyhow? It is just about high noon. It's uh, nine minutes after 12. Oh, I, I've completely lost all sense of nice day. No, we were going a little bit further south than I wanted. 20 November, 2-0. And it's Thursday. Okay. Thursday, Roger. Intrepid Houston, if you'll go poo and data, we've got an uplink for you, and go up data link to data, over. You got it. Clipper Houston, the computer's yours. And a few hey, other... Uh, While well, you got a minute, I'd like to talk over something with you. Go ahead, Pete. When we were on the back side then, uh, uh, coming around, I don't remember exactly what time it was, coming up on, uh, what was it, mid-course direction? Up on a mid-course direction, uh, we got an ECF light with a partial pressure CO2, uh, went over seven, and uh, that kind of surprised me. And uh, we did switch the canister, secondary, and sure enough, the CO2 uh, gauge went to zero, uh, like it was starting on a fresh canister. I don't think the canister that we put in, which was at 130 hours, that's only 16 hours old, has done that. And I'm wondering if maybe I ought to uh, take a look at that canister and see if it's wet or anything. Uh, Roger, Pete, stand by. I think we've got some words on that. Okay. Hey, Pete. I think the hatch out. Okay, the crew is nearly yeah, reunited. Yeah, we can open the hatch. And Trumpet Houston, the computer's yours. Roger. So yeah, another idea I had was uh, flying to the birthplaces of various yeah, astronauts and cosmonauts and telling their step, story. Uh, Those will be brief. Brief videos, not like this, only recorded at the location. Don't know if that'd be of any interest, though. Sort of a way of doing astronaut and cosmonaut biographies, though. Intrepid Houston, you ready to copy pads? Negative Houston, but we will be in just a minute. I'll give you a call. Okay. <laughs> oh, jeez. Can you tell Dick Gordon's been a bit lonely? Pietro, where are you? Yankee Clipper, Intrepid, are you giving us a call? No, we're talking to each other. Sorry about that. Okay. Hey, I, I've got my...
I think that was Dick Gordon. I'm confused uh, now. Was that Al Bean saying, Commander day, Conrad, the, where uh, are you? A P-30 Lem maneuver. Call it uh, Lem I impact or Lem final. Are you ready? Pretty close to Ankara Roger. now. Roger, now on 3-3. Three, three. One, four, nine. I don't really Two, get a eight. good sense of it though. I mean, it's to our forward zero, left there. One, eight, one, two. Plus zero, zero, six, zero, three. But after zero, seeing the sheer... Zero, well, it's a pretty zero, big city. It's five million. Five. So it's not small. Now 42 is NA. Capital of Turkey, of course. I mean, Burn I was about to say, after uh, going through Istanbul, it might not one, seem quite six, as impressive, two. but... But I think it might be just sprawling. Eggs. Minus zero one eight one. It's not as tightly packed. Plus. And of course, there's still the stock scenery. Six zero three. Minus zero 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 two eight. We'll have photo scenery in Iraq and uh, on down with Dubai and all. But uh, this is just one patch where I'm missing the photo scenery. But yeah, that city to our left is Ankara. That's affirmative, Val. Uh, a couple of flight plan updates for you. Number one, we'd like you to uh, bring back the sequence camera and uh, stow it in Alpha 8, and no bag will be required, over. We're a bit over a third of the way to our destination. Roger, Al. Also on panel 16, would you pull your lamp tracking light circuit breaker, over. your tape recorder forward switch to forward please okay it is okay the first one will be your separation burn pad separation maneuver follows roll one eight zero pitch three Four three Yaw zero 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 GET of TIG is one four eight zero four three zero Delta V one foot per second Burn Z axis retrograde over jettison path. Your roll angle is two, two, zero. Pitch is three, five, eight. Yaw is three, five, two. Correction, three, four, two. GET of jettison is one, four, seven, five, niner, three, zero. Over. 
your CSM T-76 pad. GET of TIG is 1, 4, Again, nine, uh, GET is ground elapsed two, time. Eight, That's the clock. Five, four, and TIG four, is time five. of ignition. So this all burns, of course. Delta VX minus zero, one, eight, one, one. Delta VY plus zero, zero, six, zero, three. Delta VZ plus Practical, practically all zero, the times zero, that they uh, zero, send up three, a bunch of numbers, six. it's either a burn or a, or a potential burn if things go wrong. One of those two uh, things. One, Just in nine, case, three, you know, five, four, communication five, is lacking X, at a critical zero, time. These are normally done well in advance of what they need. If you want to track the lamp, Dick, uh, this is the data that you need for uh, tracking. Oh, okay. They were giving additional numbers to track the lamp. But he was confused. See, I mean, it's always burns, and then suddenly they give him uh, numbers for tracking the lamp. This is when they release the lamp after they jettison it and, Thank you, Jerry. I understand. Roger, and all. Dick. Once, of course, Pete Conrad and Al Bean are back inside the like, Yankee Clipper and everything. CSM. I think you called it a separation package or something like that. And also, uh, we'd like to see you go back to your uh, primary LOIH canister and uh, give us a look at it and see if it uh, goes off on the CO2 again. Okay, we'll do that. We're a little bit suspicious of it because we uh, have had some erratic readings with our CO2. We'll go back to primary right now. And the... Uh, uh, and Houston, the, uh, it looks like uh, some of the stuff we used to get back at the step plane on Gemini, except it looked like a piece of metal uh, was about three feet long and about an inch wide. It was just curling up off the back there right at the step plane. Roger, Pete. Clipper Houston, I've got a Rev 33 map update for you. Hey Jerry, can we skip this one? We're kind of busy right now. Sure can, Dick. Okay, just holler at us when we come around the corner. We'll be looking for you. Okay, that takes care of the paperwork for this pass. Thank you, pal. Apollo Control Houston, uh, 146 hours, uh, seven minutes uh, now into the flight of Apollo 12. It was a series of uh, pads. Uh, we're deviating up, a uh, little bit to the left too much. Yankee Clipper, uh, uh, Clipper and uh, Intrepid. The, uh, There's the one downside to the stock textures. Uh, While uh, in isolation, they're not bad. Burn was Over the long haul, they're repetitive. Which, uh, gave a uh, time of ignition at uh, 149 hours, 28 minutes, 17 seconds, and we'll stand by and continue to monitor. Yankee Clipper, Houston. Roger, Dick, when you get a second, uh, 
got some uh, DAP data for you and a couple of switches for you to check. Okay, do I need the DAP data? Yeah, it looks like a couple of registers need changing. Go ahead. Roger, uh, R1 is, should be 61101. One, one. R2 is 01111. And check your AC roll auto select valve switches to the off position. And up TLM to block, over. I'm trying to see uh, what river this is. That we're over. It's right on the border of two provinces. And the names of the provinces are getting in the way. <laughs> Actually, there's a junction between three provinces here. Oh, okay. I see the name of the river and... I have no chance of pronouncing that correctly. Apollo Control Houston at uh, 146 hours, uh, 19 minutes now to the flight. We're less than uh, seven minutes away now from uh, loss of signal with uh, Apollo 12. We'll stand by and continue to monitor. Yeah. Yankee Clipper and Intrepid, this is Houston. There are many accent marks on the name. We're looking for AOS at 147.12, over. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 146 hours, uh, 27 minutes now into the flight, Apollo 12. Uh, we've uh, had loss of signal with Apollo 12. Now passing uh, above the far side of the moon. We'll recap at this time uh, a couple of the maneuvers that were performed uh, in process of uh, bringing Intrepid and Yankee Clipper back together again. To recap, uh, the constant delta height uh, maneuver was performed at uh, 144 hours. No minutes and 1.5 seconds uh, with a delta V of uh, 13.8 feet per second. It uh, placed Intrepid uh, into an orbit uh, with an apolloon of uh, 60.2 nautical miles and a paraloon of uh, 52.6 nautical miles. At uh, 144 hours, uh, 36 minutes, uh, 29 seconds, the uh, terminal phase initiate uh, maneuver was performed uh, with a delta V of uh, 28.5 feet per second, giving uh, an orbit of 73.6 uh, by 58.6 nautical miles. We're uh, presently looking at a uh, limb deorbit burn, which will uh, return the ascent stage uh, of Intrepid uh, back to the lunar surface at uh, 149 hours, uh, 55 minutes, uh, 51 seconds. So that will uh, be a remote this, control uh, burn and with the RCS. The for Intrepid, uh, we'll see a uh, velocity of uh, 50 not the main engine. feet per second. Interesting the, that they uh, decided to man uh, the, to actually deorbit it rather than just let it decay. Logged at, uh, 3.3378 degrees south and 23.4109 degrees west. That's probably because they want to get a we seismometer are reading on it. Apollo 12 at uh, 147 hours uh, 12 minutes and at that time uh, we would expect to uh, to find uh, Commander Pete Conrad and uh, Lunar Module Pilot uh, Alan Bean uh, completing their transfer back to the uh, command module. 
We're at 146 hours, 29 minutes into the flight, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. If they just let the ascent module decay in its orbit, which it eventually will, its battery will die, and they won't know exact the exact time of impact. If they manually deorbit it, they'll know the exact this time of impact, and then Houston, when the seismometer picks up the reading, hours, uh, they'll so have the information about how quickly the vibrations propagated oh, through the moon, uh, which will help them figure pass, out the uh, composition of the moon. Of the moon. Meanwhile, in uh, Mission Control Center, Houston, a flight director or at least be one Len data point Lenny has come in somewhat early to uh, replace uh, flight director Pete Frank. Most uh, of the uh, flight controllers on the uh, Pete Frank, uh, Pete Frank orange uh, shift, are still in Mission Control. Uh, however, the uh, change of shift to briefing will be held at uh, 2.30 as previously scheduled and will feature uh, flight director Pete Frank and uh, capsule communicator Jerry Carr. We have a, a correction to make uh, to an earlier ground elapsed time which we passed along uh, for the ascent stage deorbit. Uh, we identified a GET of uh, 149 uh, hours uh, 55 minutes 51 seconds as a time uh, of ignition, it is in fact the time uh, forecast time for impact on the lunar surface. We're at 147 hours, uh, four minutes into the flight, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. I think they may also aim to have the Apollo command module see hours, the impact or something, try to get them to look out for it. We're less than Not sure now. about that though. Uh, reacquiring Apollo 12. And when uh, we pick up the spacecraft, uh, we expect that uh, Pete Conrad and Al Bean will be in the final phases of making good their transfer back to uh, Yankee Clipper. We'll stand by and monitor at this time. Uh, this is Apollo Control Houston. receiving data. It's Apollo Control Houston at uh, 147 hours of 15 minutes. Uh, we've not yet attempted to contact uh, the Apollo 12 crew. Uh, assuming let's that, just uh, check on the winds. Only a 36 knot wind. Transfer. Hardly anything around here. Intrepid Houston, how do you read? Reach loud, clear. Roger, Yankee Clipper, how do you read? Houston, loud, clear. Roger, read you both the same. Yankee Clipper, Houston, uh, Peter, you in the Clipper now? Okay, Dick, stand by. We'll get an answer on that. Uh, I've got a couple of questions for them. Would you relay them? Yeah, I can, Jerry. They're going through that checklist so we can get out of it. Okay, here's uh, here's our questions. Uh, you know that hanging yeah, metal they were... The you know that hanging metal they were talking about on the uh, service module? We're wondering if that's in a position such that it might possibly be the cause of our uh, S-band antenna problem, causing it to dither. Oh, yeah. That might cause an antenna problem. That would Both sure explain it. That, uh, uh, Jerry, uh, uh -oh. It's uh, right around the plane of the service module, and it's uh, right on the top of uh, Dick Gordon wears his S-band antennas on his bottom left, if you uh, go relative to the upper windows. 
Okay, we copy that. And the other one is, uh, don't forget to bring the LEM TV camera across. We've already got it, and it's stowed on the command module. And we put it in one of those special bags because it had a lot of dust on it. Roger, good. And also, Houston, we uh, need to know if uh, we can just go ahead and leave our LCGs here if you want them brought back. Uh, we're checking on that now, Pete. I don't know what those are. Sometimes I do not know what the acronym is. I may have a way of checking on that. Oh, hopefully the PAO can explain that. The uh, LCG uh, reference there is the uh, liquid uh, cooled garment. Ah, thank We're you. We're at uh, 147 hours, 20 minutes down to the flight. Saves me an impromptu internet search. The ever helpful public affairs officer. Clipper, Houston. Reading the minds of the audience. Go ahead. Roger, uh, high gain antenna is not doing too well. We'd like you to go manual, and your angles are pitch minus four one, yaw four over. Intrepid, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Roger, on your uh, LCG question, the only uh, problem we have right now is in the area of contamination. Uh, we're giving a quick check out on that, and we'll have an answer for you in just a few minutes. Uh, Houston. Uh, Intrepid Houston, the only problem that um, the question mark we have with the LCG being left in the limb is a contamination thing. We're getting an okay on it and we'll get back with you in just a couple minutes. Understand. P-30 look good, Al. Clipper, Houston, I have a CSM DAP load for you and a map update for Rev 34. Okay, Dick, your CSM weight is 35634. I've got your trim angles anytime you need them. Your map update is Rev 34. LOS is 148247. 1482, correction, 4943. 149-1101. Roger, I copied that in the CSM weight is 35634. Affirmative, Dick. Intrepid, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Roger, you can leave those LCGs in the lamp if you want to and uh, let us know where you've stowed them, won't you? We're going to leave them in the CSM city uh, bag, which will be on the floor. Okay, fine. It's Apollo Control, Houston. Uh, we're still looking uh, for a uh, limb jettison time of. 147, uh, 54, 30. 
not a whole lot of big cities on in this part of this Turkey, like, uh, unfortunately. Uh, um, if I went significantly minutes, out of my uh, way, there are a few. your master alarm circuit breaker closed. advised his flight control team uh, we've completed all of the work in the lunar module as far as we know and we're standing by at this time uh, for the crew to secure the hatch we're at uh, 147 hours uh, 35 minutes into the flight of Apollo 12 it's Apollo control Houston now uh, while we're standing by uh, why don't we quickly uh, go over some of our uh, upcoming uh, ground ground elapsed times uh, for events. We're looking at a ground elapsed time for the jettison of the lunar module of uh, 147 hours, uh, 59 minutes, uh, 30 seconds. A uh, ground elapsed time for um, command and service module separation maneuver of uh, 148 hours, uh, 4 minutes, uh, 30 seconds. And a GET uh, uh, for ignition of the D. Oh. Clipper. Roger, Clipper, go. We're about two thirds through the flight. About a verb 44. Oh. I think there was just weather loading. Second, that was a little bit choppy there for a sec. We're looking at a GET for the ignition of the deorbit burn of uh, 149 hours, uh, 28 minutes, and uh, 14 seconds. With a, a GET uh, for impact of 149 hours, uh, 59 minutes, uh, 51 seconds. Uh, Clipper, Houston, we're going to send an I'm error sometimes reset. not sure exactly why the PAO tells us these things in such exact terms, but... Uh, Yankee, Clipper, this is Houston. Uh, the Intrepid is go. You can uh, clear it out any time. Unless people were betting on the impact time for the lunar module. <laughs> I mean... But maybe it's for... for Historical record, Roger I suppose, Clipper. which is helpful. You would expect the information to be recorded elsewhere as well, but... Yankee Clipper Houston, go for pyro arm. Roger, go for pyro arm. Apollo Control Houston at uh, 147 hours and uh, 43 minutes. We uh, presently show Apollo 12 uh, with an apolloon of 62.6 uh, nautical miles and a paraloon of uh, 57 nautical miles. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 147 hours uh, 50 minutes uh, now on the flight of Apollo 12. We've uh, not yet received verbal confirmation uh, from uh, Commander uh, Pete Conrad uh, and Al Bean that they're both now back in Yankee Clipper, but uh, we feel reasonably assured that they have uh, affected their return. We're standing by at uh, 147 hours, uh, 51 minutes into the flight. Apollo Control Houston at uh, 147 hours uh, 53 minutes uh, into the flight. Uh, 
Our two clocks in mission control, the bottom clock, uh, identified as ET, is counting down to uh, jettison. We're at uh, five uh, minutes, 45 seconds away. The top clock uh, counting down to uh, command and service module separation, the separation uh, by Yankee Clipper. And we're now 10 minutes and uh, 30 seconds away from that event. That was uh, Dick Gordon reporting from the Yankee Clipper that they're now less than two minutes uh, from uh, jettison of Intrepid. All three crew members now back uh, in the Yankee Clipper. They'd better all About be in Yankee Clipper. If you're wondering in Kerbal Space Program whether I've ever accidentally left a Kerbonaut in the lander reports, uh, after I jettisoned the, it, the, two spacecraft the answer is yes. Separated. Fortunately, EVAs are much easier in Kerbal Space Program than in real We've, life. We've uh, received no acknowledgement yet uh, from the crew, but on ground-based displays, uh, we did uh, read out the... Uh, jettison of the lunar module. Not the best rendition of this ravine, I feel. Yankee Clipper, Houston, uh, go to react on the high gain, over. Roger. We're approaching uh, a town called Malatia. have a report that the command service module has now completed the separation maneuver, a 5.5 second burn of the reaction control system uh, engines. Yankee Clipper, Houston. Oh, great. Roger, your high gain's beginning to jitter again. Uh, better go manual and your angles in the flight plan are good. That's uh, minus 36 on the pitch and uh, 352 on the yaw. This is Apollo Control at 148 hours, 10 minutes. Our LEM systems engineers report uh, all systems on Intrepid look good after the jettison and uh, subsequent CSM separation. Uh, the times we have for those two maneuvers are as follows. 147 hours, 59, 59 minutes, 30 seconds for the jettison of the lunar module. And 148 hours, 4 minutes, 30 seconds for the separation maneuver performed by the CSM. We show 13 minutes, 50 seconds now until loss of signal. Yankee Clipper. Our flight director on this shift is Glenn Lunny. And the capsule communicator coming on is astronaut Don Lind. There will be a change of shift briefing shortly in the news center. Houston News Center. Uh, the participants are leaving at this time. You can see that the train is getting uh, somewhat more mountainous as we go along. And I think the elevation at Batman is pretty high, like around 5,000 feet or more. Uh, it's a very high altitude airport. Uh, for you about your uh, sensors, uh, the sensor irritation, if you want to uh, listen to that. We're already at a uh, surface altitude of 3,000 feet. Roger. So it was just reported that the LEM jettison produced negligible effect on the uh, lunar module trajectory and uh, should have no effect on the time of ignition or the uh, delta V required for the uh, LEM deorbit scheduled to occur on the next revolution. 
And that maneuver is now planned uh, to occur at 149 hours, 28 minutes, 14 seconds with a delta V uh, retrograde 191.3 feet per second. That uh, will be a reaction control system maneuver, total duration of one minute, 21.4 seconds. So the city to our forward left is Malatya. signal strength variation through the spacecraft high gain antenna. Capcom, Don Lynn uh, requesting that the crew switch to one of their Omni antennas. Our ground station at the present time is Madrid where we have an 85 foot dish. We should be able to get uh, uh, fairly good communications through the Omni antenna with that uh, ground receiving antenna. Uh, Roger, we recommend that you shut off the high gain. First, put the track switch on manual. Next, put the high gain power switch to off. And talk to us through uh, Omni. We assume you're on Omni Bravo. We can catch you. You're a Flight Director Glenn Lunny now taking a status from all of his flight controllers uh, three minutes before loss of signal on the command and service module. And the report all around the room is that we look good. Apollo 12, uh, Houston, everything looks uh, in good shape down here. Also, the limb uh, looks in good status for the deorbit burn. This is Apollo Control. We've had loss of signal now. We'll reacquire the spacecraft on its 34th revolution at uh, 149 hours, 11 minutes, or about 46 minutes from now. At this time, we'll switch to the Houston News Center for the change of shift press conference, which is scheduled to begin at this time. This is Apollo Control at 149 hours, 10 minutes. We're now about one minute from reacquiring the spacecraft on its 34th revolution of the moon. Uh, during this rev, the major activity will be the LEM. Uh, oh, we're beginning to get some of the photo uh, scenery closer to at, uh, the southern hours, border of uh, Turkey seconds. there. Uh, causing the LEM to LEM ascent stage to impact the lunar surface at 149 hours, 55 minutes, 53.2 seconds. The maneuver which deorbits the LEM will be uh, performed with the lunar module reaction control system thrusters. Uh, the burn time, uh, burn duration will be 1 minute 21.4 seconds, producing a retrograde delta V of 191.3 feet per second. Uh, the maneuver will be performed at 14.22 uh, degrees south latitude 62.5 degrees east longitude, uh, which would be just about over the Sea of Fertility. The uh, impact point is predicted to be about 4.8 miles south of the, of the uh, lunar module descent stage. And the impact uh, coordinates are uh, 3.31 degrees south and 23.43 degrees west. I swear he sounds like he's he's going to sneeze right there. Uh, we have acquisition of signal now. 
Uh, Capcom Don Lind has put in a call to the crew. Uh, picking up, uh, we expect the uh, propellant remaining in the lunar module descent stage to be about 350 pounds at impact. And the um, propellant uh, remaining in terms of delta V will be about 394 feet per second. Our uh, communications engineer has I just definitely that, should uh, get uh, a photo scenery of uh, Turkey. On the, uh, command module I think the we'll, uh, landscape is quite line. a bit more dramatic than the stock scenery admits <laughs> and we have a good solid lockup now the uh, control systems engineer reports that probably the looks good. i feel like it's not unlike arizona at least uh the higher land uh the raised portion of it we now show uh, 12 minutes 53 seconds until ignition for this lunar module ascent stage deorbit uh, one of the primary purposes of the maneuver is to uh, give us a calibrated signal on how a given level of energy is transmitted through the lunar surface to the passive seismic experiment. We have indications from the previous seismic experiment left on the moon uh, as to what sort of uh, signals we get from the instrument. We don't, however, uh, have a good handle on how a given level of energy is transmitted through the lunar surface. And it's hoped that uh, by impacting the LEM ascent stage, which has a known mass and a known velocity, uh, it will help us in interpreting previous and subsequent seismic signals from the passive seismometer. Apollo 12, Houston. Our network controller reports that we still do not have good two-way lock with the command module. Uh, we will be trying to transmit in the blind to Dick Gordon. Oh, 12 uh, Houston in the blind. For your information, uh, for P-20 tracking of the LEM module with the sextant, you'll get a program alarm 20430 when, when the LEM vector intersects the surface. Uh, with a verb 66 enter, reset the alarm, you'll clear that. Impact time at the surface should be 1, 4, 9 plus 5, 5, plus 5, 9 That's when you should get the alarm 2, 0, 4, 3, 0, and it's only the limb vector passing through the surface. Capcom Don Lind uh, just passed up a new impact time for the LEM ascent stage, updated about uh, 5.8 seconds from the previous time we had. Uh, the current prediction for impact is 149 hours, 55 minutes, 59 seconds. The altitude of the uh, lunar module ascent I'm stage begin to at, at this the point. beginning of the deorbit burn will be about 57.8 nautical miles. The predicted flight path angle at impact will be about 3.68 degrees. We also have a predicted crater size uh, for the uh, LAM impact. Uh, the prediction uh, for that crater is that it will be elongate about uh, 6 meters wide and about <laughs> uh, 12 meters long. They really so calculated about, everything. Uh, 4 tenths of a meter to 6 tenths of a meter calculating the size of the crater from the limb impact. And at this time we still do not have good two-way lock with the command module. We're getting good data from the LEM. Hello, Houston Yankee Clipper. Loud and clear. How you doing, Dick? But I have said that it'd be fascinating if uh, KSP-3 had deformable terrain. I'm sure people would have way too much fun with that. Kerbal Space Program 3, I mean. Okay, 
Okay, the burn ignition time is one four nine er plus two eight. I mean, you can tell from the photo scenery how different the terrain actually looks. It's not nearly the green fields that we have on this side. Though, certainly there are farms there, and that's probably captured in a very dry season. Yeah, that's quite a dramatic view, looking at it that way. A little bit choppy right now. Okay, fine, thank you. Uh, Roger, we've got uh, some other goodies for you. We've got a P-40 maneuvering pad when you're ready to copy. We've got some uh, words for Pete about his skin irritation. We've got some consumable pads and a few other things when you want them. Right here, there's quite an oasis of green. This is just outside the city of Diyarbakir. There's a Diyarbakir Northwest Airport, and also another Diyarbakir Airport. That town up ahead there is Diyarbakir. impact time is now 29 minutes 44 seconds away. It's probably qualifies as a city. Um, Coming up now on one minute till ignition. To be Our honest, uh, engineer says that we're clear now to command the limb. Houston, uh, one minute to Whether I call it a town or a city is largely dependent on how big a uh, urbanized splotch appears on my map, basically. Coming up now on 20 seconds to ignition. Ten seconds. Lots of Nine, shimmering. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Uh, I swear it's some sort of one well, of the post processing filters should smooth that out a bit. And guidance confirms we're burning all four jets. Apollo twelve, Houston, the limb is on its way down. Well, this is on. Let me see if the shimmering... No, there's still shimmering if I turn it off. The frame rate seems to improve, though, so let's just leave it off for now. Total delta V to be gained, 191.3 feet per second. Seconds. 
doesn't seem like Batman uh, is like as high altitude as I thought it was. Based on preliminary tracking that we're going to be I mean, just, we're just uh, uh, 2,000 feet right now. Uh, predicted or planned impact Maybe I had the wrong information. Miles, 4.8 miles south of the... Well, uh, the map should be able to tell me. Are we uh, within range of seeing stage. it? The prediction now is that it will be about 20 miles short. Uh, we're standing by for the flight dynamics officer to come up with a uh, predicted set of coordinates for impact. This Sirit, I don't see... I mean, there's definitely highlands to north and south here. So maybe still. Oh, that's Batman right there. Say again, Closer than I thought. It actually seems pretty low. It seems to be in a low point. Yeah, I blame Google. Google said that the elevation was 5,000 feet. Apollo 12, Houston, we show just under 20 minutes to land impact. Somebody got so confused. We're now 19 minutes from predicted impact. Uh, they predicted Seems like it's only actually 1,770 feet. 5,254 pounds. Apollo 12, Houston, we've computed a new impact time for the uh, limb impact from the surface at 149er plus 55 plus 17. All right, here. Well, we're now a little less than 15 minutes from the scheduled time of LEM impact. Now, the new impact time passed up to the crew by Capcom Don Lind was 149 hours, 55 minutes, 17 seconds. Uh, we also have some new impact coordinates. Uh, the latest estimate from the flight dynamics officer is that impact will occur at 3.95 degrees. This town is Bismil? Uh, 21.17. B-I-S-M-I-L. 21.17 degrees uh, west longitude. And uh, we should have uh, that broken out in actual miles from the uh, land, uh, the LEM descent stage uh, shortly. We're now coming up on 10 minutes until LEM impact. The flight dynamics officer advises that the impact point uh, should be about 39 well, miles this is definitely not a nominal... Targeted point. I was looking the at the map just now. Was about I was not meaning to descend the, like that. Uh, lamb landing site. The road beside us is uh, D370. Also seems to be Diyar Bakir Batman Road, basically. I assume Yolu means uh, something uh, like road or expressway or something. Boulevard. Jet, 11 seconds, 
and this assumes no plane change to. That city up ahead is Batman. Okay, copy T, iPad 39, SPS, GNM, Check the river. You got some what? Don't say again, you were cut out. Uh, Roger, we've got a consumable uh, update for you. Uh, RCS total is 47.6, alpha is 46.4. Bravo is 48.7, Charlie is 46.4, Delta is 48.7, and we show 2 minutes and 38 no, seconds. I don't see a uh, name for the river on the map right now. Okay, understand, and uh, would you tell me when I should uh, start on the uh, secondary? We can see the airport right there. We've got some descending to do. seconds from scheduled impact. Uh, one of our displays in mission control uh, will be showing us the seismic trace. Uh, hopefully we'll see a very clear indication of uh, the LAM impact on that uh, trace. We would expect that to show on the fourth trace uh, from the left, which is the short period data uh, from the passive seismic experiment. Now one minute, 25 seconds from LAM impact. We're coming up on 30 seconds to impact. Guidance officer reports the LEM is going to attitude. Uh, we're getting good data from the lunar module at this time, and of course we'd expect that all that data to go blank at impact. Ten seconds to impact. Down for limb impact. Three, two, one, mark. Oof. <laughs> limb impact. And we've lost data from the limb, indicating we impacted on time. Okay, thank you. Always nice to have those uh, careful predictions control. actually work. Uh, 
that's not quite the effect I wanted. Would you give a stand to that? Huge lift again. Oh, uh, that's all three of my batteries. Battery C, pyro A, pyro B. Oh. Roger, I understand for all, all batteries. Also, would you give us uh, a word about the uh, CO2 cartridge secondary? We were wondering uh, why you'd gone to secondary if you had any uh, other trouble. All right, on that. time to go into the cockpit. Unfortunately, the cockpit view starts really far back for some reason. Oh, okay, we need to pump that up a little bit. You can see the indicated uh, um, stall speed is way low, though, uh, like uh, 105 on that speed on the, dial. Uh, so we've got room, big wing again, and body lift. That is affirmative, affirmative Omni Bravo. Really need to be able to send. That'd be helpful. That's uh, Omni Bravo when you uh, configure for sleep, and we'd like you to put the normal S band voice to off at that time. Roger. Uh, one question, we were wondering if the uh, sequence camera had been uh, wrapped uh, when you stored it for, uh, to prevent damage. Uh, your choice as to where you want to stow it. Apollo 12, uh, would you hold what you have on attitude uh, until we finish this EMOD dump? Uh, Dick, uh, for the uh, RCS, we're 25 pounds on each quad above the level at which we'd open the secondary, so things are okay there. Okay, I won't worry about it tonight. Roger. Apollo 12, for your information, all the uh, surface experiments for ALSAP are, are in uh, great shape. They're all uh, operating very well. There's apparently no temperature degradation at all because of any dust, so that looks like it came out real fine. The uh, passive seismic is working fine. It uh, noticed uh, Pete walking past. Also got a very nice trace uh, for your liftoff. On the limb impact, we were probably about 40 nautical miles away, so uh, the short period didn't get anything, but it looks like the long period got a couple signals. Also, the cold cathode gauge could see the sublimators walking past Pete when you went over to check the side experiment, and all the other experiments are uh, working fine, so everybody's absolutely delighted in the way you uh, deploy the LSAP. Sounds the good. The did record the impact on long period. Apollo 12, uh, Houston, before you close out the uh, LEB, we'd like to just uh, uh, remind you to zero the optics and we'd like to leave the power oh, on. Oh, we're so quite a bit off. The uh, CDUs tonight. We've seen just a couple of glitches and we just want to follow through on that and see how they're doing. They're doing fine. Very good. Apollo 12, Apollo 12, if you read, would you give us Omni Bravo, Omni Bravo? This is Apollo Control. We're now 10 minutes from loss of signal with Apollo 12. Now the spacecraft is oh currently geez. in orbit with a... This is a little bit embarrassing as far as approaches. I think the map and a low point is a little bit offset. Current altitude 61.3. And a I'm too high still. Is scheduled to begin at about 4:45 p.m. Central Standard Time in the news center briefing room. Uh, well, the passengers are gonna get an exciting situation. I ladder a go around. Apollo 12, if you read, give it's us Omni Bravo. 
Omni seems Bravo. unlikely to be this one. Apollo 12. This Apollo is like a shuttle 12, landing for heaven's sakes. Bravo. Omni Bravo. Uh, Omni Bravo. Uh, just a reminder, there's like minutes of gap between each of these uh, messages. Apollo 12, Houston. Apollo 12, Houston. Could you give us Omni Bravo? Omni Bravo. Just cut out the gap. Apollo 12, Houston, we show about three minutes to LOS. If you could give us Omni Bravo, we would appreciate it. Omni Bravo. Apollo 12, Apollo 12, Houston, we show two minutes from uh, LOS. Uh, we'd like Omni Bravo, if you could. Omni Bravo. Apollo 12, Houston, uh, we show one minute from LOS. Uh, if you read us, would you give us a, a Omni Bravo? Omni Bravo. This is Apollo Control. The oh, spacecraft turns out now that's behind not the moon. too bad. We'll be reacquiring in about 45 minutes. The Apollo 12 science briefing is scheduled to begin shortly in the news center. Uh, auditorium in the small briefing room in Building 1. The briefing will be conducted by principal investigators, uh, Apollo 12 principal investigators. At 150 Oops, hours, 24 minutes, this is Apollo Control, Get Houston. Stopped on the ramp for service. Service? This is Apollo Control at 151 hours, 23 minutes. There's service at this airport. Uh, we passed the... Point of Unfortunately, uh, about uh, 13 minutes ago, I don't see any taxiways at this airport. Uh, we though. have not uh, established communications with the spacecraft on this revolution. The crew is scheduled. I guess it's just uh, straightforward. I time. don't see anything on the map. Um, Capcom Don Lind has been putting in periodic calls oh, to the crew. Uh, this we do not stuff believe over that here. they are uh, asleep at the present time, and uh, we're in the process now of attempting to re-establish uh, a usable on the antenna and good signal lock with the spacecraft. Hmm. The flight dynamics officer has recomputed the... Could have used a little bit wider taxiways, but stage. anyway, we have arrived at Batman. Uh, the recomputed impact as point differs very little uh, from the previous estimate. Uh, the uh, latest estimate of the landing point is 3.95 degrees south, 21.17 degrees west. Now this would be about... You gotta let the PAO finish miles east talking of the first. Planned impact point and about 14 nautical miles south for a total of about 39 nautical miles east southeast of the uh, planned impact point. Okay, let me pause it right there. Oh, nope, nope. Okay, so uh, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this flight. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.